This will be a very short video on SharePoint local workbenches. So when we create any SharePoint web part, we will use local workbench to debug or see how the actual functionality will work when we deploy that web part to the SharePoint app catalog. So in this video, I will explain you the different types of workbench that is the local workbench and SharePoint local workbench. So the only difference between these two web parts will be like uh, the local normal local workbench will not have a connection with SharePoint and SharePoint workbench will have uh, uh, the data connection like you can access the SharePoint list, libraries, uh, SharePoint context, uh, that is the page context and all uh, SharePoint functionalities. But in normal uh, local workbench, you can just uh, see a look and feel of SharePoint modern page, but you will not have any data connection between SharePoint and your uh, local environment. So without further delay, let me uh, take you to the screen and show you uh, what actually these two workbenches are and how these two are different from each other. So navigate to SharePoint and SPFX Workbench. So you, you will get landed to this article. So here I have explained uh, what is SharePoint local workbench and how the normal workbench is different from the SharePoint workbench. So uh, let's see uh, what exactly the SharePoint workbench means. So when we work with SharePoint SPFX, so basically local workbench plays very important role. For example, if you have developed some code using SPFX and you want to test it without deployment, so in that case what you can do is you can open your workbench and you can actually see your web part working you can design the ui you can uh, work with the functional component like you can write the code to pull the records from a sharepoint list or um, basically you can perform a CRUD operation so now um, uh, think like uh, you have a chrome browser and you want to uh, type some code or you want to test your jquery code so consider that uh, you want to test some jquery code like you have a uh, uh, two variables and you want to make the addition and for that you have written some function and you want to test that function so what you can do is like you can uh, open the console of your browser and you can write that code here and you can test it so basically what here what you are doing is like you are uh, trying to execute or you are trying to uh, test or debug your code using a browser console means there is no need to deploy your code um, into your SharePoint site or anything right so basically without deploying anything you are just testing your code similarly workbench provides the exact similar functionality means without uh, deploying your package you can test your SPFX web part so uh, to open the local workbench what you just need to do is like you just need to um, first open your uh, SPFX web part uh, into the Visual Studio code and just write your code whatever we want. So for now, I have just kept the exact same code that we developed in the previous video, which is a hello world web part. It's a default uh, uh, human generated um, SPFX sample web part. Yeah, so, so the easiest way would be like just um, go to the your spfx folder and just type here cmd and hit enter so this will open that um, file location directly into the command prompt now just type gulp serve so if you saw my video i've explained what exactly the gulp serve do now this will open your web part into a browser local workbench so if you can see here it has opened the workbench so basically this is called a sharepoint workbench so if you can see here you will get uh, some kind of look and feel like a sharepoint so this kind of ribbon will be there and here this this is a modern page kind of thing so uh, once you click on this plus button you can see your web part just add it now you can see it is running so this is the workbench where you can see your uh, web parts ui and functionality now uh, there is another workbench so this is a local workbench and there is another workbench which is sharepoint workbench so if you open that so here is my actual sharepoint site 
so what you need to just do is after your SharePoint site let's say I have this uh, Google Analytics site so after this site what you just need to do is underscore layouts slash workbench dot ASPX so this will open the actual SharePoint workbench so now we have two workbenches this is a local host workbench and this is a SharePoint workbench I'll also explain you what are the difference between these two web, uh, workbenches so now I have added a hello world web part on the SharePoint workbench as well as on the local workbench now the difference between there is only one difference like in the local workbench you cannot uh, interact with SharePoint list or libraries or even SharePoint context means you will not have any SharePoint context available into the local workbench but in SharePoint you can access uh, anything that is um, available into the SharePoint site for example you can perform a CRUD operation into a list libraries or anything now let's see uh, practically how it is uh, different so I'll just open my code and this is just for a demonstration purpose you do not need to worry if you don't uh, understand the syntaxes and all so here is our hello world web part dot ts file so if you remember um, we can see whatever property we have configured here in the property pane that was getting reflected here right so instead of this thing I want to show the site name here so to show it what I will do is like I'll just type this dot context dot page context dot web dot title so do not worry uh, I'll explain you these things later as we proceed further but just for now you can understand like uh, this this code will give us the site name so now I will save this file and as gulp serve is already running it will just execute the workbench and it will reload the workbench now you can see it has reloaded and th this is now uh, saying this is a local workbench so this is the uh, we can say this is a local workbench that is that's why it's not showing any site name here it's just showing local workbench but now if i reload this page you can see it, it's, it's saying Google Analytics because the site name of my uh, site is a uh, Google Analytics if you go to site settings and see the title and description so you can see here the site name is Google Analytics similarly uh, I'll open in another site this is my root site and if I open the workbench here it will say okay let me add the web part it will say spfx course test site so this is a site site name so i have shown you uh, two different uh, actual sharepoint sites where it is showing the actual sharepoint name now the one difference is like as soon as you change the um, text here for example i'll type my urish that is my name and i'll press okay i don't need to write it in the double quotes so i'll save it now you can see uh, the gulp serve automatically executes and it will automatically reload the local workbench and you can see my name will reflect here see but on the SharePoint site it will not auto reflect so in that case you just need to manually refresh the thing so this is the second difference So now uh, let's say uh, in future uh, whenever we are going to create the CRUD, CRUD operations on the SharePoint list in that case our local workbench will not help us because there we won't have any interaction with the SharePoint list um, as a workaround we may create some dummy data and we can use that dummy data as a SharePoint uh, REST API uh, response and we can uh, um, work with that dummy data but we will directly go with the SharePoint um, uh, workbench as we proceed further and we can uh, work uh, further with this SharePoint workbench itself. Now the last thing is like uh, there is one file. Um, uh, I'm going to create a separate uh, video 
for the folder structure why we use these many files and all but for now uh, just understand that there is under config folder there is one file which is serve.json here um, we mention which initial page we want to show so here uh, you can see uh, it's by default written as localhost so if i want um, my sharepoint workbench on the page load so i can just copy this and paste it here and save it so that uh, whenever i run the gulp surf now for now let me stop this gulp surf for stopping it you can press ctrl c twice and then again type okay uh, let me first close the browser okay uh, local is open no issue so just type gulp serve again and you can see instead of opening the local workbench it will open the sharepoint workbench because we have written the sharepoint url see my class book and this is a sharepoint workbench now let's see uh, i'll add the hello world web part and you can see my name is there now let me update something here and we will check whether that will auto reload or not so i'll add my surname as well i have saved it now it's running see it's not reloaded but there is already one opened the local workbench that got reloaded no need to keep it open but just for understanding uh, just remember that uh, sharepoint workbench never reload itself we need to manually reload it yes so uh, i guess uh, that's it for today so uh, to summarize the things uh, we have learned about uh, SharePoint Workbench. Uh, there are two different types of Workbench, which is Local Workbench and SharePoint Workbench. And um, we we have also seen how we can configure the initial page using serve.json file. And uh, uh, how the refreshing works in the Local and SharePoint Workbench. And also we have seen the difference like SharePoint Workbench will have a page context and everything that is in the sharepoint like list libraries we can access it but on the local workbench we cannot access them so yeah that's it i hope you like this video if so do not forget to subscribe to our channel and get notified for all the upcoming updates and finally thanks for watching